Welcome back to question two of this series, and once again we'll be finding the eigenvectors of a matrix. In question two we're asked, find the eigenvalues and bases for the eigenspaces of matrix A, where matrix A is a two by two matrix. So unlike in question number one, I'll be going through the whole process step by step, starting with finding the eigenvalues. Now to find the eigenvalues, you need to follow this formula, where we take matrix A, and we subtract from it lambda times its identity matrix. The resultant matrix will take the determinant of that. And I'll represent that by putting these lines. And by subtracting this matrix with A, you'll end up with matrices that have unknown values. Those unknown values will be lambda. To solve for lambda, we'll make the determinant equal to zero. And lucky for us, unlike in question number one, this is a two by two matrix. So finding the determinant is much easier. Let's get started. So once again, matrix A is three, six, five, and two, a two by two matrix. And the identity of a two by two matrix looks like this. We have ones across the main diagonal. I should represent this as a matrix. And it's being multiplied to lambda. And that's equal to zero. So eventually, once we find the difference between these two, I'll then find the determinant. To subtract two matrices, that's not hard to do. We subtract element by element. And this should give us three minus lambda as the first element in the first row, six minus zero is six, five and two minus lambda. And now we'll find the determinant of this matrix and make it equal to zero. To find the determinant of a two by two matrix, we first take the product of this diagonal and subtract it by the product of that diagonal. So we have three minus lambda times two minus lambda minus 30 is equal to zero. As you can see, we have a binomial times a binomial, so we will expand and we'll end up with six minus three lambda, notice the arrows. Now, lambda times two, negative lambda times negative lambda gives us negative two lambda, positive lambda squared minus 30 is equal to zero. Notice that we can combine negative 30 and six to give us negative 24. And we can also combine these two terms to give us negative five. So we have negative five lambda as the middle term, minus 24 and lambda squared is equal to zero. Can you think of two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative five? I can think of negative eight and positive three. So I can factor this and I can now solve for lambda. This gives me two solutions, positive eight and negative three. Now what we do with these two numbers is the following. For each of the solutions, we'll substitute them back into this matrix and solve it as if it's a homogeneous system of equations. Think of an ordinary matrix being multiplied to a column vector equal to zero. And with that said, I'll start by substituting eight into lambda. That will end up giving you a two by two matrix. Three minus eight is negative five, six, five, two minus eight is minus six. So here we have a matrix and we will wanna solve this as if it's a matrix times a column vector is equal to zero. So I'll add some zeros here and I'll try to solve by putting this first into row echelon form. Interestingly, this row and this row, if I add row one and row two together, look what happens. Adding negative five plus five gives me zero. I'll put that zero here and I'm amending row two, so I'll leave row one the way it is. Negative five, six, and zero. Adding six plus negative six gives us zero, and zero plus zero is zero. So unlike in question number one where we put this in a row echelon form, luckily for us, this matrix is so simple that all we had to do was add the two rows together, and we don't have to worry about putting this in row echelon form. Now, I'm going to call this column x sub one, in this column x sub two. Rewriting row one as an equation, I should end up with negative five x sub one plus six x sub two is equal to zero. 
Now notice that x sub 2 does not have a situation where we have a leading 1. I mean, take a look. It's 0. So we can call x sub 2 a parameter and set it equal to any letter we like, which I'll call t. Therefore, this is also t. So we have negative 5 x sub 1 plus 6t is equal to 0. I'm going to solve for x sub 1. By taking that over, I have negative 6t. And on the left side, negative 5 x sub 1. Dividing both sides now by negative 5 gives me x sub 1 is equal to 6 over 5 t. I can represent my solution as a column vector, which I'll call x, is equal to t times, over here, for x sub 1, we had 6 over 5. And over here, the leading coefficient was 1 for x sub 2, so I'll write down 1. This matrix right here represents one of my eigenvectors. Now remember, we had two solutions. We had 8 and negative 3. So rather than place 8 into here and into there, I'll be placing negative 3. 3 minus negative 3 gives us positive 6. That 6 stays the way it is. 5. 2 minus minus 3 is 5. And I'll add the extra zeros because we're solving. Now I'm going to put you in the driver's seat and allow you to solve this any way you like. I'm going to put this in reduced echelon form. And I'm assuming that you know how to do this already, so I'll skip this step. And if you do it correctly, you should end up with 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. It's only a few steps to do this. And by now, you should know how to put a matrix in row echelon form. Once you have it here, looking like this, you can use the same steps that we used in the previous matrix. I'll call this x sub 1, x sub 2. The first row can be represented as 1, x sub 1, plus 1, x sub 2. And x sub 2 falls into the same trap as the previous one, where it doesn't have a leading 1. Therefore, it will be a parameter. I'm going to call it t. Now don't forget to represent that x sub 2 is equal to t. Solving for x sub 1, we get x sub 1 is equal to negative t. And now we can write our solution as a column vector where t times the column vector negative 1, because that's negative 1. And x sub 2 was 1. So we have the following situation. Therefore. Our eigenvectors is this highlighted one and this one. And there you have it. That is how to find the eigenvectors of a matrix from start to finish.